welcome to the Danny. And Rihanna show. This is Danny Pena, Rihanna's husband. And this is Rihanna Manuel Pena, Danny's wife. And ooh, we have a very exciting episode today. We get to talk about one of my favorite games. And that's Hades 2. Now, for those that don't know, well, Hades... To what? be clear, my favorite one of my favorite games is Hades One. Hades One. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Sorry about that. <laughs> I got a little too excited. We're talking about uh, Hades, uh, but more so specifically the technical test for the sequel, which both Danny and I have had some time playing. Yeah, and we, we'll talk about a little bit about the whole what's a technical test and and all that stuff. But first, we have a poll from last week. Mm. Where uh, I, as a, uh, we asked a great question about we 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 talked about Fallout TV series right after the premiere. I was so tired <laughs> for that one. And then after that, uh, after that episode, we talked about video game adaptations. We talked about like all kinds of different TV shows and movies. So yeah, there's some good comments on those. Yeah, we had a great poll because this one relates a lot uh, with both both of those episodes. So this one was I posted: Do video game adaptations increase your interest in playing the game? So let's say you watch uh, a show. Is that going to make you go play that game uh, because of that show? So, uh, so sixty six point seven percent said yes, and thirty three point three percent said depends. So it depends on that. So, so what do you think about that? Yeah, mm. I mean uh, that seems to be in line with what we've seen at least for Fallout, right? I think most recently we saw one of the follow games is number two on steam <laughs> and those yeah. games are years old. So that's really cool. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, congrats to Bethesda. It's a, a nice little lift that they're getting uh, on a very old game and fallout four is getting an update soon. So all of these new fans have uh, an excuse to go back and play that game. If they weren't able to catch it when it first came out, myself included. You know what? I'm excited to play that because I have an ultra wide screen and they're mm. going to put uh, ultra wide screen support for the first time. So I'm definitely going to play that. But right now, I've just been playing uh, Fallout 76 because that's also part the of the multiplayer Fallout. version. Yeah. The multiplayer version. That's like part of the Fallout universe and everything like that. So very cool. Uh, so yeah. Um, and, uh, and guys, if you're watching this or also uh, listening to this on, on a pot on your favorite podcast app, make sure to post a comment. You could post a comment in different places. We just want to, you know, see your comments, your thoughts about the episodes, the vibe, the, and maybe request some topics. We'll, you know, we'll read it and look at it and, and, and so on. So just want to yes, say that really please, quick. please give us comments. Um, give us a review. We love five stars, but be honest. How are we doing? And yeah. and let us know what you think of the show. Like we're, we're really building this as we go, you know, and we'd love to build it with you all. So please let mm -hmm. us know your thoughts and what you want to hear about more. Uh, we're still trying to figure out what, what our, our lane is that we're going to be swimming in. So, so help us figure it out. Yeah. And we're having fun. That's the most important thing. We're having a blast yes. with this. Yeah. So uh, this is the first time that we are going to be talking about, this is more like a hands-on impressions preview. We have never done this on, on, on our show. So Ree, for those that don't know, what is a technical test? Yes. So a technical test, and, and this may vary slightly from one developer or one game to another, but for mm -hmm. Hades 2 and for what we usually see, a technical test is a very small chunk of a game that is provided to a very small audience. So either people um, internally and externally who sign up to test something, it could be mm -hmm. with an actual vendor or contractor group that signs up to test a game and give feedback um, outside of its normal quality assurance testing. Um, and there's also some developers who choose to open a technical test out to the public. So a lot of times, most of the time, it's friends and family, right? As people say like, hey, here's five codes to each of the um, each of the employees working on the game and they give them out to whoever they, they think would be useful uh, to get feedback from. And that's the way they get feedback. And then anything that they hear about in the technical test feedback, they implement it to make the game better, right? So this all happens before a game is available for purchase or to play for the mass audiences. And it's similar to a game released in early access, which is a term that a lot of people are more familiar with. Mm -hmm. Now, early access, it can be almost anything. <laughs> like mm -hmm. there, there's a lot of games that open in early access and never really leave it. Uh, I'm looking at you, Fortnite. Uh, it did officially release, but it was out. It was out in early access for 
years. So it, mm -hmm. it really just depends on, again, the developer or it depends on the game. But the whole point of releasing a game in part or while it's still in progress, you've heard the terms alpha or beta. Uh, the point is to get feedback, to test the game, to stress the, the servers if it's a multiplayer game, to fine tune the combat if it's a single player game you know, balancing everything so that it's the most fun it could possibly be. And the easiest way to do that is to get tons and tons of feedback. So that's the point of a technical test like Hades 2. It's the point of an alpha, the beta, <laughs> early access. And, and the hope is that if there's enough feedback given before the game is truly launched for its full release at full price, that it is as close to perfect as the developer can get it within the time that they have. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some early access games that cost money. There are some early access games that are free. Technical tests, usually free. And that is the case with Hades 2. So the way they did it this time, Supergiant sent out uh, a, a note to folks saying, you can sign up here. There's a link and you fill out a form uh, on Steam and you say, hey, I'm interested in trying this early. And we we got to do that. So <laughs> we have... Um, about, I would say maybe like five ish hours of gameplay to, For to you. talk through. I, I have a lot. I love a lot more than that. Yeah, Fine. Yeah. So, There's, yeah. it's possible to play this game quite a bit. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. and, mm -hmm. uh, for this technical test, you can only go up to one boss encounter. You can do it multiple times uh, it cuts you off i believe at five times but there's a lot of game you can play in between there right so i guess we can get into it danny what did you think what's your your overall thoughts yeah the technical so test? For, first thing first i have to mention that the first game you play as a male character uh, and this Zagreus. one, he is the son of Hades. I can give you Hades. so much lore. <laughs> oh, there you go. So you, you know the lore in that one. Uh, got, I'm, I'm more of just like the gameplay. I, I don't know much about the story, uh, but in this one is different. This one is actually a female character that you actually play. So what's her yes. name? Melinoe, and Melinoe is also a, a child of Hades. She is the younger sister of Zagreus, our first game's protagonist, and. Mm -hmm. for reasons and in circumstances not 100 percent clear her mm -hmm. entire family is missing and we know that the titan chronos is to be held responsible so interesting Malinue or mel is fighting to get to chronos she's saying death to chronos that's that's her goal in this game now i have to say this one of the things that i love about the first game is besides the gameplay but my god that soundtrack i remember <sighs> We were we were so in love with that soundtrack, the first game. Yes. That we were jamming it on Spotify. We would just drive around uh -huh. and just play the whole thing. Just play it. We, I would listen to care. it while I was working. Like, yeah, it was like we have was like the a vinyl. Vibe, right? We have two copies of the vinyl. <laughs> yeah, I have one and you have one. And I have yeah, one. Yeah. Shout yeah, out yeah. to Darren Corb. Darren, ugh, amazing stuff. And we actually heard a live rendition of um in the blood from the first game which is one of the best songs on that soundtrack um mm -hmm. at the hollywood bowl at the, oh, the game yes. awards concert I forgot, I forgot about that and that yeah, was live yeah. and it was amazing live. absolutely mm -hmm. fantastic the music is wonderful that's one of the first things that let me know what we were getting when the game awards two years ago now um had the teaser announcement for hades 2 do you remember that? We were in the theater. We weren't sitting next to each other, but we saw some gameplay. The art style from Supergiant was like super apparent. And, um, text. and then and text. And the text. But <laughs> you saw the character's eyes. They had one green eye, one red, which mm -hmm. is a characteristic of Children of Hades. It was like, oh my God, it's Hades too. And then you I heard it right I away. Start, I started hearing the music and I screamed out loud in the theater. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now I have to I have to say that um I really, really enjoy this game. Now the, the setup is a little bit different than the than the first game uh this one it took me a while actually to find where to leave because i was like yeah there were so many different entrances but so you're talking about them, from the the hub world right in the beginning yeah hub mm -hmm. world right in the beginning of the game a lot of the locations are blocked because one it's not available two maybe you will open that up later in the game and um there was a lot of characters to talk to so i was just taking my time just getting to know about the characters and stuff like that and, and, and again, this is not going to be like any spoilers or anything like that. So I'm just going to keep it as as spoilers free as possible. But 
I found a location where to go. Now I'm like, I, I'm re. I was like super ready to just come back. I I just want to find like the right weapon, and also I had to get used to the controllers because it's been it's been yeah. a while for me that I haven't played the the first game, right? So, so I got in, and uh, first usually the first level of the battle, it, it's like that's how you know how the how the your your round is going to be if like, it's going to be really good or not because you randomly will get different type of power powers like perks in there cuz you unlock like different gods and and they'll talk to you and they'll tell you hey whatever it's part of the script of like the story and then you select uh different powers but a lot of those are very very random so like for me I love like the ice uh ice perk there was another one of fire, which I used that a lot during like the first uh, couple of rounds. Was there anything that stood out to you? Because I know there was a lot. There was like water. Um, there's uh, also, I believe, like lightning too in there. What was the ones that you liked the most for you? Uh, it depends. So what you're describing is that this is a, a roguelike game where you play against a bunch of different enemies in different rooms and you go as far as you can without dying. Mm-hmm. Once you die, you start over again. That's the... The, the pattern that you follow and each time you go into a new run as Dana's describing you start off with a god that appears to you and says hey pick one of these three power-ups and then that happens and, and time after time after time as you enter new rooms sometimes you enter a room where you get uh, just a, a perk or some loot that you need instead of a god power you can choose what kind of door you go through sometimes. It, it's very complicated. If you haven't played Hades 1, it sounds a little bit confusing, but it, it really, you get the hang of it quickly. But mm-hmm. you always start off with a god power. And the first god that appeared to me um, is, I, oh goodness, who was it? Was it Poseidon? Poseidon popped up for me for I the think it was second Poseidon time. First. Second time or third. Like yeah, so me. I started off with the Poseidon's powers. I'm not a huge fan of his. A lot of his powers deal with like waves and pushing, like pushing enemies out of the way, like clearing an area. I don't it really helps. find that very useful. It helps, um, Ori. <laughs> if there's a oh, lot I'm, of enemies. You asked me my answer. Here's my answer. <laughs> yeah, 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 uh, yeah, the, yeah. A lot of them also, some of his deal with getting more loot, so finding treasure, right? And mm. I, I don't really feel the need to do that in a technical test, so I haven't really found him super useful. The goddess Hestia, uh, goddess of hearth, she has fire. I love the fire powers. I think mm-hmm. Scorch, where you can put it on your your fast attack, was my absolute favorite. I feel like I was flying through enemy encounters every time I got that power. Um, Demeter, the, uh, she's like she has frost powers, right? The ice that you're describing. I find those fine. Like they slow enemies down and keep them from you know crowding you, which these enemies can get really, really tight and really close fast. That was mm-hmm. kind of helpful, but you know not as exciting. Um, who else did I really like? I liked Apollo. I always like when I can find Apollo because he helps me run faster. <laughs> so that lets mm-hmm. me like zip around the the map. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually surprisingly around uh, in Hades 2, I really liked Aphrodite's powers a lot more than in Hades 1. Um, there's one that I ch- kept choosing where you do additional damage to enemies that are close to you. And I like to fight up close in these games. That was super helpful. I feel like I flew through rooms and encounters and fights when I had that. So there's a couple that I really, really vibed with, but it really just depends on what what's happening in that run like what weapons upgrades i get like if i find a daedalus hammer and i can you know make my attacks a little bit stronger like like it's it's all a huge puzzle box and as you said it's randomized so it just depends i think my absolute favorite run and my favorite build so far i was using i don't want to give names of things that aren't unlocked at first i was using a really quick weapon and I was able to put Aphrodite's power to hit people with higher damage up close. I was able to put on one of Hestia's powers to make my distance weapon um, flamed. So I had like flame arrows. And mm. it also, I got a Daedalus hammer, which made my arrows shoot out and then come back to me like a boomerang and hit people for double damage when they come back. So that run, I was clear in rooms. Like it was chef's kiss. It was mm-hmm. absolutely perfect. 
So it really just depends on how everything goes. And there's a certain character that gives you some additional uh, power-ups that are, like, super OP, like, really cool special moves. And that happens a little bit later in the technical test, so I won't give too much detail. But mm. those powers are, like, next level. Those are, like, insta-wins. So there's a lot of really fun stuff here. And, I mean, it's very clear that they have more. But what was really impressive to me, if we can talk about narrative just really quickly, because I know... I'm more into the story. You're more into the the combat Mm -hmm. is they are super giant is known for incredible stories and incredible narrative in Hades one and now in Hades two. And what I am so impressed by is there, there are, it seems like unlimited voice lines in this game. It's never ending. There, there are so many interactions where, like, if you meet one god first, then another god next. They, the second god has something to say about you meeting the first one first, and then also has something to say about you meeting a totally different god three runs ago. Like the dialogue trees must be, un, like, unintelligible. <laughs> it's just so impressive, mm-hmm. and they all have really great personalities. The acting is incredible. The voice work is so so good i found myself like laughing out loud at some of the lines because they're just delivered so well and Mm -hmm. you immediately get the sense of all of these different personalities coming together and how they're this weird you know celestial family of of gods and your mentor hecate who is a, a witch right she's the uh she's the person who saved you when everything happened with your family she is ooh, so mysterious and encouraging, but I don't exactly 100% trust her. And she's also like, like really patient with you, but also, you know, doesn't really let you slip up. And it, I don't know, it's just such an interesting dynamic. And she's very compelling as, as the main person who is sort of training you in this technical mm-hmm. test so far. And the, as the story is unfolding, you have some people in the world, the hub world, that are cool with you. Some people that are a little bit sassy to you. <laughs> There's people who want to help, people who don't. And it's just really cool to see this this whole web of personalities and this web of story unfolding in such a small amount of the game. It already goes so, so deep, right? And I love mythology. I love storytelling. And um, playing through these games is one of the things that that really makes me fall in love with smaller teams and and smaller developers that that can really put all of their heart and soul into something with a lot of without a lot of outside input and super giant is just huh, hit makers man like this game is already at the top of my list for yeah, game I, of the year and it's 100%. not even out yet <laughs> yeah 100 and, and i also have to say like it, one thing that i do like about this game is even if let's say you don't defeat the boss and you go back to like the hub world, right? You will go back there and you start talking to the characters that are there and it still feel like you're advancing the game because yes. now they have like new dialogue. There, there's you Now you're having like different conversations or maybe when you're in an area where you're collecting, you're killing enemies, you're collecting stuff. When you go back to the hub world, there might be like an area where it will tell you like things to things to collect or things that you re unlocked, or maybe you find like one thing that it wasn't in the first game that I remember is there's a new thing where you could also plant seeds yes. in, in an area in the hub world where you could go back later if you you know if you die or if you beat the 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 boss you go back there and you see the plant already out you could use that for like other stuff. So that's the thing that there's so many more things to do in this game that wasn't available in the first game too mm-hmm. that I really really like. Um, uh, another thing that I really really like too about this thing is there's I'm not gonna mention the name of the character, but there's one character that is new that helps you with armor. Mm. Have you unlocked that one yet? Yes. Okay, that's all. That's all I would say. It it helped me to last longer in the beginning because I, I it was taking me a long time to actually figure out the boss i don't know maybe for you you probably figure out how to beat the boss right away but it took me a while and that was one of the perks that really really helped me later mm-hmm. in the game so it's not all about like speed and damage but also armor uh maybe there's a, a perk that's going to help you with like your your health you're going to be regaining health or regaining magic 
uh, powers. Um, you could use that in the game. Um, another thing that stood out to me too is the store. The store is back. Love the store. When I'm struggling and my health is low and I have a lot of money that I've been collecting th- throughout the remission, I go to that store 100% of the time that I see it. I'm <laughs> like, you know what? I'm going to go. Now, there's going to be cases where you might see an icon of a skull and, and a perk on top of it of like a god, right? That is a mini boss that you could also unlock in there, uh, which is, it was pretty cool. A little challenging at first. I figured out right away, but um, I really like that. You don't have to do that, but sometimes when you do unlock that, the perk that you find there, sometimes randomly, most of the times, you might find some that's rare, like ra- mm-hmm. a rare perk that it's going to be very, very helpful during your round, uh, you know, before you get to the boss and stuff like that. So was there anything that stood out to you that was new without spoiling? Yeah, the name and, of the and it is, like it's funny that we're saying no spoilers for, you know, a few hours of a game, but it really does get deep fast. It gets deep um, in, in just the first. And there's so many like round. surprises. I just don't want to take that away from anybody who's not mm-hmm. able to play yet because it is not widely available. So yeah. that's why we're being so dodgy. But something that really stood out to me is the change in, like, how Malenoe fights and, um, how, like, the theme of this game, which I can talk about without spoiling anything. So mm-hmm. um, in Hades 1, or Hades, you play as Zagreus, son of Hades. You're in Hades. You're trying to fight your way out. And you're a brawler, right? Like, you have fists. You get upgrades. You get different weapons. But uh, you're, you're a dude with weapons, <laughs> basically. Um, for the theme of Hades 2, it's all surrounding like witchcraft and the um, the dark arts, if you will. And the way that Mel fights is she uses spells and incantations. And when you go to your hub world, one of the first things you see is this big, huge cauldron. And you can go over to the cauldron and do rituals in order to unlock things. And mm-hmm. I think it's just – and you're, obviously Hecate, who the, the witch, is your mentor. So I think it's just cool that it's it's all around hexes and witchcraft and, you know, these, you know – with womanly powers and you know celebrating the moon and the night and it's just it, it's a cool like spooky vibe and i really like that that is a, a nice contrast to hades and how it's like oh you're in the fires of hell <laughs> and yeah yeah and it's just a, a different side of that and like you're talking about like the moon spirits and you know the silver and the moonlight and you're talking about oh the moon is new so you know the powers are changing it, it's just very cool to to see that be like a through line for um, not only this character but the the way that she's trying to go after chronos right her her ultimate enemy and i really like that vibe it's it's a cool vibe and it enters in through different different parts of the game you know different ways that you uh that they name things like it's just a cool theme to to put witchcraft on top of hades yeah one one thing that i'm excited to see in this game because in the first game a lot of people don't know about this to actually see the true ending and it still feels like it's not the ending yet (laughs) it's you have to finish it multiple times. I'm talking about a lot. I and have. Every I want to say 57 runs. Something you never like got that. to. You, you got to 57. 50 something runs in Hades one. Yeah, I've beat oh Hades God. like 20 times. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Same here. Like 20 something times, and then yeah. I'm like, oh, this is a lot. But uh, the more you play, the more you finish the game, the more stuff you unlock, the more, more story. You dialogue. And when you beat it, I think it was like the 10th time. That's when you see the ending. I'm not gonna say what it is from the first one if you want to play it, and it unlocks a totally different thing. I'm like, wow, this is mind blowing. Yeah, ending so very, is in huge quotes because it's actually just the beginning. <laughs> it's the beginning, but I, I'm very curious to see what is it that we're, we're gonna get to see in the second game. You know, the amount of because right now is the whole family disappeared. Who is gonna pop up when you finish it a couple of times? Is it? You know, is this just the beginning if you finish like 10 times and then more people from the family later? Like, there's so many questions that I have, like how this is going to run, because that was one of the coolest thing about the first game. It felt very unique and I've never, ever seen that in any game, especially like a roguelike game. Yeah. Yeah. I think like Supergiant that. has some uh, something really special in their hands yet again. So far, 
it's topping the original, and I did not think that was possible. And so this is a technical test. That's the yeah, thing that's mind blowing to me. It is absolutely mind blowing, one hundred percent. So. Hopefully, uh, Supergiant has been trying to get more and more people into this technical test. If anybody out there is curious about playing this one, um, do your best. You know, good luck. The game will release in early access, they said, later this year, which will give you more of the game, but not the final cut. But there should be a little bit broad, more broadly available uh, than this technical test, which is a smaller group of people. And... Hopefully more story, right? Like hopefully mm-hmm. uh, we, we get a little bit more more content with that one. I'm sure we will. And yeah, the, hats off to to the team and good luck developing this. I hope our feedback during the technical test is, is strong and able to help move the production uh, the production process along. Because oh Lord, Lordy Lord, I cannot wait for this to actually come out. Now, now, my, I have a, two questions for you, Ree. Two okay. questions. One is. Are you getting the early access? Yes. Okay, that's one hundred percent. Because I know we're gonna get to see more stuff, Absolutely. more stuff than what we have now. Because as a technical test, there's a lot of content in there, which mm-hmm. is surprising. So imagine how, early how access. How many hours have you played? Ooh, I finished it. I beat the boss five times, so I have a very long time. Because it's adding the, I died, I messed up, you know that type of thing. But I think once I hit three. Like the third time, that's when it was things like a lot faster for me. Mm-hmm. But I have to double check. I have way more than five hours. Way, way, way yeah, more. Yeah, I, so. I have about five hours ish mm-hmm. in there. Mm-hmm. And uh, oh lord, yeah, I've, I beat the boss three times as well. And oh, nice. Mm, my goodness, it's so good. I <laughs> am so I'm playing on your Steam Deck right now, uh, mm-hmm. audience. I'm playing on Danny's Steam Deck. If I get into the technical test on my Steam account, I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> like, oh, that's how good it is. That's how good it is. Yes. Now, now, my question to you, because you play the a lot on the Switch, the Switch Lite, and, the, and honestly, you could play in any version. It doesn't really like. There's no major difference. No. In, in my opinion, maybe you'll see like little things here and there, but it's mostly like which controller feels best for you. Yeah, I think I'm gonna play this on the Steam Deck. At I PC. do too. Yeah. yeah, and and we don't talk about accessibility a ton on this channel because we are not accessibility experts. We are proponents mm-hmm. of accessibility always. Um, you know, the more people play, the better. But I had no issues reading the text, accessing the menus so far in this one. And it, as you know, like text in games is smaller the screen gets, the smaller the text will get. So mm-hmm. a lot of times that's something that I think about and, and is a concern, like a Baldur's Gate, for instance, on Steam Deck might be too hard for me to read and play. Um, just oh, too hard on my eyes. Yeah, because yeah, I need to wear glasses. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> yeah. 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 So, now, so this one has yeah. been has been very approachable for me. And I mm-hmm. did not look into the settings to see if you can enlarge in text or not. But Supergiant is a very conscious developer i would hope that they're thinking about that especially since steam deck is such a good way to play this game and the last game released on handheld so they do have that feedback yeah i I think this is the perfect handheld game yes it doesn't matter if you play this on the switch or steam deck or any other handheld device but uh, another thing i want to say too which i i didn't really talk about re you need to experience this game on ultra widescreen at least once okay all right it's a different beast Mm. one and you've seen the picture i mean it's beautiful this great. game is beautiful it's beautiful great. it sounds amazing it feels great to play all of the voices actors are 100 percent wonderful we didn't talk about how hot the character art is oh they're all hot they're all, hot. They're they're all, all hot. so sexy yeah. like ugh, there's there's yeah. nothing lot, lot that they traps. didn't do amazing <laughs> like, a lot of thirst traps again they're back <laughs> yeah no but i have to say read you and anyone it's. I know the percentage is very small of the amount of people that are that have been playing um, ultra widescreen games on the PC. This is an experience to play this man because mm. the you have the lights off, you have your headphones on, or your speakers. Up to you, whatever you want. But it's beautiful. It's wide. You see, like you see everything. Mm. I, I, to me, it was easier for me to see like the enemies uh i felt like i was in the game that's how yeah. good it is like yeah. oh it's so good it's so good you will love it okay so, i'll give it a shot but it is great on handheld hopefully you could try that tonight before you we, <laughs> we go we go out of town or something but uh yeah so 
great game. I, and here's the thing: for those that have never played Hades, play the first one. I I think it's a uh, it's an amazing amazing game. It's one of my favorite games that came out that that year. Uh, this one I think is gonna top top the second one, the first one, and guarantee when I see the soundtrack of the second one out. I'm, I'm also buying that vinyl, that vinyl immediately. I'm getting that vinyl right away, 100%. 100%. Insert coin, don't let me down, please. It took too Ooh. long last time. It took oh, way too man. long. I'm ready. I'm ready to do this. I got the money. I got the money right now. I'm going to this. <laughs> throw it to the camera. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> All right. So, anything else, Ree? No, else? I, I would say this is wonderful um, technical test, uh, really fun experience. And Again, we, we're not in the habit of doing game reviews for every single thing that comes out on this channel, no. but this is a really special game, and mm -hmm. uh, it, it's worth your time if you like games, period. Mm -hmm. If you like this, playing games, give it a try. This is going to happen in the future, though. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I just want to put this out there. For people mm -hmm. who don't know my history with Hades, I... I want to say strongly dislike. I hated roguelikes. I don't like wasting my time in games. I don't like games that make me grind. I don't like games where I don't feel like I'm making progress. I don't like games that I can't play with other people. I, like there's so many reasons why I should not have ever liked Hades. Mm -hmm. It was my favorite game that year. It's one of my favorite games of all time because it was done so well. Like because it never feels like you're wasting your progress. It never feels like, you know, you've lost time and you haven't gotten any value out of it. Like the entire experience is valuable and so unique and so special and so effective and beautifully crafted and perfectly executed and this sequel is no different so mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. sorry i just wanted to put that out there that like this hades is the roguelike that changed my mind on roguelites and they've done it again no the, the only thing i want to say and, and look uh i don't want people to get used to like oh man they're gonna review a whole bunch of games no no i think when there's games where it is important and it relates to us, because Hades was a game that helped us a lot during the time of the, the pandemic that we were, you know, we were inside the house and I'm playing Hades, you're playing Hades in, in the other room, and we get together like, oh my god, look where I'm at. And you were like, we had a great con a great conversation about the game too, great time overall. Even when we started traveling. We'll take Hades with us and 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 play, and then you'll show me like, look, look at the weapon that I got now. That I'm like, oh, this boss is is done. You know, like it was really really cool experience that. So those are the type of conversations, Reed, that I would love to do with you. Like when there's yeah. games that it is important to talk about or something that relates to our relationship. I think it's great for us to, to sit down and talk about it. I don't want people to think we're reviewing everything. No, it's oh not. gosh, no, <laughs> we don't have that happen. kind of time. <laughs> no, at all, at all. But it's it is fun. It is. Fun. I'm glad that we uh, have this as our first game, hands on impressions and preview on our yeah. show. So I'm very very happy about that. Yeah, and for for everybody listening, if you're into it, let us know how we're doing with, with the game review because <laughs> they yeah. they may come up uh when when things are really special like danny said there's some some really special projects coming out this year that you know we're, mm -hmm. we're going to want to talk about on this channel together specifically so let us know mm -hmm. if we did okay yeah it's good good so everyone thank you so much for watching or listening to the danny and rihanna show uh we'll be back next week with another topic we'll see hey send us requests we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll see but <laughs> send us uh, requests, we'll send us feedback give us uh yeah. ratings and reviews please let us know please. how we're doing yeah the, mo the more support we get the the more new audience will discover us because of your support so go for it man so everyone thank you so much for listening until next time we're out bye, bye.